I beg, you know, say again, some people they behave. Now, smoking the day to a safe person, now by the person for this country. My guy gave kidney problem. I can't give up my one kidney. That same week, when they just do surgery, where I donate one kidney, I can't see on the smoke cigar. I say, man, and give me my kidney back because you know value one. Me, when you keep the kidney, you know the smoke on top of them. I be move. I just give you kidney where I didn't get paid since the childhood you reach now. I just give you kidney, never reach five days, you just smoke on top of new kidney. Now I just, we did, we're going to scan my kidney, then the brown. Eh, give me my kidney, I know do all those kind of things. Which kind of thing, why would be this people just, I give you kidney five days, then the smoke on top. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You know what they say in literature, life will be totally boring without comedy, right? It's time to unwind and let down the air after all the serious talk. And to help us, you know, have fun doing that, we have joining us um, Kenneth Oguche, who is also known as Sariking Daria. And Kenneth looks very different this morning, different from the man that we just saw tickling us to laughter earlier on. Good morning and welcome, Kenneth to the Morning Brief on Channels Television. Good morning. Good, good <laughs> morning. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> We're so glad to have you. So tell us, first of all, did you get your kidney back? <laughs> yes, no return it. He has decided to keep it. He said, uh, I'm taking the matter to public that we'll, we'll rob ourselves in the gutter. That's more kidney I give him. The whole world is knowing that uh, I gave him kidney. Something I'm supposed to keep private. But he's misusing the kidney. Me, I decide to pet my kidney. He needed it. I gave him. Now he's misusing the kidney. I don't like the way he's kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. It's a good way to start, uh, Kenneth. So talk to us about um, your trade um, before we begin to look at how it's thriving in Nigeria's north where you're based. Uh, what informed um, your foray into this genre? I'll say my environment first of all, and then the passion for it secondly. And so, um, how have you honed your skill over the years? Consistency and, uh, you know, putting uh, more work, definitely, and um, getting to cope with the dynamics as they come and as situations and uh, society change. We blend along with new style of comedy and all of that. So, Sarah King, so uh, walk us through how you got here, okay? It's not a one-syllable or two syllable i'm sure there's a journey of how you got here i know you are you're a historian um and i guess that means you studied history in school and then now you're holding your thoughts in this area so walk us through that journey uh, even before i became an historian i graduated sometime in 2019 that's like five years ago before then i've been doing comedy actively for like um i would say five years before I went into the university. I've been doing comedy actively over 12 years now. So I'm a professional stand-up comedian who over time I've decided to do content creating because I, I think it is the new way of um, reaching the larger audience in social media is a global village. So aside doing stand-up comedy professionally, I have decided to say, okay, I want to do content creating alongside, and that better the Serikin Daria brand uh, that is now, uh, you know, accepted nationally and globally by the grace of God. Um, academically, I'm an historian. I used to tell myself, I used to say, I'm an historian by profession, a comedian by unemployment. <laughs> so since I couldn't find a work for myself, <laughs> I, I had to decide to be very funny. Yes, to be very funny because. Uh, uh, things were not so funny with me, so I had to decide to crack joke to make life funny. So it is a taboo for you to meet me and not get laughter. 
<laughs> Hence the reason why my name is Serikin Daria. Serikin Daria is an Hausa word that means king of laughter. Yeah. So it is my natural belief that once people come, come around me or have an encounter with me, they should laugh. Fantastic. And, you know, you have such a very interesting history in comedy. Uh, MC3310, for those who have been following you and how you've transitioned uh, yes. into, into what you're at now. So you see, you have a lot of fans, both uh, nationally and globally. But speak to us. Let's get deeper into your yes. craft. Because you say you're the king of laughter. And you said you're a comedian by unemployment? Yes. Historian by profession. Historian by profession. <laughs> and I think that's the story of a lot of Nigerians. You know, you study one thing, but as a result of, uh, you know, the economy, you go into another thing, and they thrive in it. And it just speaks to how, uh, you know, enterprising Nigerians can be. If you, say, if you could say one hard thing about the work you do, making people laugh, um, what, what would it be really? How, how tough is it to make people laugh? Because it's not an easy job. Some of us have tried comedy. <laughs> 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 and you end up laughing at your own joke. So how do you, what, what goes through your mind when you want to make people laugh? Uh, how tough can it be in, to, to bring up all of that content? And I mean, you made us laugh from the first comment you made. So talk us through your process. Uh, I would say comedy for, for most comedians is a very intentional thing. And um, it's a follow come thing. You know, for somebody like me, from my childhood days, secondary school, I've always known I was going to do comedy. But that didn't stop me from, you know, going for my academic sojourn and all of that. So comedy for comedy, making people laugh is a very serious business. And for every professional business, uh, for every professional comedian rather, we, we take the business of making people laugh very serious. Making people laugh has become business because uh, it's putting food on my table. So I take it very serious. So you will not pay me to make you laugh and then I come around joking about it, even though my work is to joke. Mm. Mm -hmm. So when I come, I, must, I just must deliver. Mm. Speaking of delivering, uh, particularly amid these very challenging times, you know, people will tell you, look, uh, or more, I cannot go out, you know, for any show because, you know, to consider transportation in the first place that would take you to a place of concert, to a club, to a comedy night out. How is the trade thriving, not just for you now, uh, but, you know, generally in the part of the country where you are? Um, well, I would say for, for somebody like myself and a lot of us who are in the, this part of the country, the, north, um, the comedy trade has not, you know, uh, gained acceptance like that as it is elsewhere uh, in the country. I would say particularly in the West. Uh, so we have designed our own style of comedy that can be accepted by our people here and as well to, you know, project we from the north that yes, uh, people in the north also can accept joke and um, find things funny. Um, you know, the, the current economic challenge and all of that definitely makes a lot of people, like you say, uh, don't find things funny anymore. That is why the social media has become my, my quick tool to letting people know that uh, despite all the challenges and all that we're facing, uh, there's still a reason for us to laugh. So I've decided to do a style of comedy on social media that I call comic activism alongside with my band, the Quaro Band. So I designed a, a, a pattern for myself, the Seri Kindaria, where people see me and know I am from the North. So if I have to do comedy, I just must speak our own Northern reality. And so that is what I've chosen to do. It's not so easy for people, but once I'm able to gather these numbers and figures on my social media, it will be easy for me to transform them to live reality audience. You know, when I have to do my shows or do tour around the north and everywhere like that, just like every other comedian in, uh, in, in the different parts of the country who have tried to take comedy beyond Nigeria, myself and a host of us who are from the northern extraction have done same. It means gradually we're penetrating into the market on a national scale and continentally. Oh, so what would creatives do without the social media? Speaking of which, let's see you do your thing, you know, uh, from one of the posts that you have shared. And then we'll be right back to continue this conversation. For this country where food, you know, they now you they rush, they wake up. 
Christ, you don't rush away off and now you go eat. Food, you know, they, they rush away off. Something when you go sleep, pretend like say sleep still they worry you. Wake up around 11. Before you know, to 12, that kind, you can do morning devotion, pretend like say food is not really your problem. You know, that kind of wisdom. Before you know, you go eat morning food for afternoon. Then you can say, I know be just now nice. eat. Before you know, you go eat afternoon around 6. Before they don't finish. Now, this country now, to eat be like course code 101. <laughs> the last time when some people see breakfast for this country now, since Tinubu and Tagodman, the last time some people see breakfast now, as their girlfriend tell them, say they no do again. When you see breakfast, yeah, the way they rush, they wake up, with can't risk it, they take like that. You won't kill yourself. <laughs> but sir, Kinderia, is that a good counsel? You know, uh, people need to wake up early in these times so that they can go, you know, get the means to um, putting food on their tables. Um, but what if, what about people who don't have work? You know, one of the law of dialectical materialism I was taught in school is that uh, it is when a man eats food that he can work. So how about a man that has not enough food to eat? How does he work? Now man when chop go work. And as well, now man when work go chop. So it's a two-way thing. So if there's nothing to eat in the morning, don't just rush and wake up like that. You are taking risk. You want to take your own life. So you just you start sleep a bit and wake around 11 a.m. Before you know, you now do like you want to brush. 12, don't reach. Time for lunch. You now eat breakfast. Time for lunch. Like that, you just go about your activities. I know be just now eat. Before you know, 6 p.m., you eat lunch, 6 p.m. They don't finish. You don't run on 101 or 011. One. Cost good. Like GST. So what, cost. what time do you now have to go and look for the money you need to eat the, the remaining part of the food for the day? Work day, work day now they do comedy. If there's work, I will not be doing this. You think I don't like to, to sit in the office? And we wear suit every morning. Mm. I, I bet I bet you don't <laughs> like no to. Work, so <laughs> I'm talking, can I, I bet you don't like to sit in the office. Again, it's your calling. You said it's follow come. Yeah. That's what you said. So obviously sitting in the office will be like punishment for you. Yeah. And I'd love it's to actually boring. experiment with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give Serikindaria a job for a week. Yeah. I see the look on his face. I'm sure it will be sad, like sitting in the office. And it just speaks to, you can respond to that, by the way. You can't respond. No, if they say department for cracking joke for staff, I definitely will want to take the job. <laughs> Gather the staffs in the morning, crack joke for them. At least that was what I was doing in my secondary school days as an assembly prefect. I'll gather the students in the morning, crack joke for them, and all that to make their day. So I set a tone for the day and all that. So imagine if there's a department in China's television now where every morning we gather the staff and make them laugh, <laughs> their day will be made. <laughs> I, I'd love that. Maybe we'll work on creating that office. But you know, some of your elements also speak yes. to reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've talked about government. I, do, I, I think at some point you almost got into trouble, you know, but hey, it's your work. You can use satire, comedy, to speak to real life issues. So how has it been really for you when you use comedy and you touch on issues and people come for you and say, no, why are you being political? You didn't say this, this and that and that. How do you handle all of that? Comedy, just like music, has this different genre. Everybody has a reason why they are doing comedy. And you just must have your own style of comedy. Like I mentioned earlier, my own style of comedy, I, 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 as an historian, I told myself I was going to do comic activism. That is employing satire when I have to address any issue. You know, elsewhere in the world, people like Dave Chappelle, the Chris Rock, uh, maybe on the continental level, Trevor Noah and all that, has been able to use comedy as a tool for correcting societal ill, for talking on topical issues that can affect or change the, 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 the narrative about subject matter that would better the people. So if I have comedy as a tool, that is my own way of, uh, you know, commenting and contributing to national development. You know, I, I must say, sometimes I have dared to talk about some things that look like they were, it, it was not a, it was not going to add up. Eventually those things, there were changes made, maybe from the part of the government and all that. It means they see these complaints we make. Some time ago, I talked about the, the case of uh, 
one chance and kidnap in the FCT, where I had to call the current minister of FCT, um, His Excellency, yes, on Wiki. I had to call him and I said, let this video get to him because it is necessary. And then I started to give a narrative of how police has to be very conscious at the checkpoint, things they were doing before that they are no longer doing that is now affecting us security-wise and all that. Though I might be employing comedy as a means to pass the information and all that, but people have gotten the message. That is the essence of it. That is what my own style of comedy is all about. We, we through the means of trying to make you laugh, get you to get the message. And the best of message are passed when people are laughing. Mm -hmm. So that's why comedy is a, is a major tool. It's not just a, a long before now, they used to see comedians as people. <clears throat> These people are not people they should take serious. But now people take us serious because it's, it, is, it is an industry. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an industry that is, you know, um, changing a lot and um, creating jobs for people who ordinarily do not have. Somebody, somebody like myself. With, uh, <laughs> about unemployment. About unemployment, right? So, so just, just because, just a minute. So, I, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, comedy for a lot of people may not know takes a lot of intelligence, because it's also part of social commentary, uh, which is what you have deployed as, 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 as an artist in that area, in that creative space. So, for you, is there any? Maybe we don't have the luxury of looking at all the things you have done in terms of. I, 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 I watch you on social media. But are there comments or skits you have done that speaks to the current situation in terms of the economy? How did you relay that for those who haven't seen it? <clears throat> yes, definitely. I have loads of them. Uh, for those who follow me on social media or those who are my ident follower, uh, would definitely know that is what I do best. They are, I have them. I do music comedy. I do stand-up comedy. I do skits. And each time I have to just do, it just must pass message. If it's not passing message, I'm not just all about having the views sometime or getting it go viral. But I just do something that is about the current reality and all that. If hunger is the in thing we're talking about, I just must do a skit around hunger to bring to the notice of the government that ah, we are really suffering. Or at least me that is closer to the people in the street than you that is up there in the, in the government. Uh, me, I'm bringing it to you through the tool of social media, which is now the closer means of getting to you people mm -hmm. that uh, we the suffer. There's hunger. I did a recent one where I made a parody of um, Kiss Daniel's song featuring the video to it where me and my band, um, I just had to, you know, do that. And it, it had a lot of views. And of course, one way or the other, it just must find its way into the phones of the people who are the suzerain of affair in the country and all that. So that is it for me. So I have loads of them and different kinds of work and all that. You know, I did not just start now. Uh, I think my major break happened from just doing stand-up comedy during the corona era, where the whole palliative thing and all of that, people really suffering myself. I was a, a part of those who suffered, you know, the setback during the corona era. I had to come outside to do a parody of the Michael Jackson song and it went viral. I got a lot of calls, both from Nigeria, on the continent, and even from, you know, abroad and all of that. Uh, you know, people asking me what was the current situation, and it was a major break for me. So I told myself, okay, if I could do this, and people are calling me from as far as the US, the UK, Russia, and all of that, then I could also use this as a way of, you know, getting the information out every time there's need to do that. Speaking of this parody, maybe <coughs> this would be the perfect time you know, to amplify it and ensure that it gets to those who should um, uh, watch it and get the message. Let, let's take it and then we'll be right back uh, to put some more questions through to you. Let's have that parody now. No, it be like the shake of a dada. Oh, hey, oh, yo. Oh, now be rude, she put your foot in and so I'm gonna be yo. So I'm gonna be smoking one year, be like a boy. When are you told or you short? You go on a point to you, but the boy is alone. Or the boy, when I live, when I evil, how is that? You're about 
TV za unga na tujeda she the flow for every body like it way 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 she the flow for body way 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 she the flow za body way 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 oh yeah flow za body way way flow za body you know that is certainly therapeutic to ease the stress you know and make light of these serious issues but your deployment of you know satire to pass the message the social of the social economic challenges and you know politics across i wonder if it limits the space of your reach in terms of platforms of expression you know for you to perform uh, particularly because you operate from the, the federal capital where really you should be getting a uh, number of jobs i wonder if you catch my drift you get those calls you know to perform at those platforms where the senators are or because of your outlook does it limit um, the opportunities that come your way Uh, it, it does not. Um, even though sometimes I, I, I suffer it a lot when some people want to book me for events, they say, ah, this boy, make him no come, who can't talk to a guy like this and all of that. But sometimes I, I bust their bubble when I just come, I do my thing professionally and, and just leave. I have the means for getting the information to you, which is the social media. So when I'm doing stand-up comedy or I'm anchoring event as a compare, I just stay true to the job and do it professionally and leave. So sometimes when I even talk without the artistic accent that I, I use as my own style of comedy, they are so surprised. So they are different sides to me. As a matter of fact, I am a polyglot who, who enjoys speaking in multiple languages and all that. So I just find the Hausa speaking tribe and artistic accent a more convenient way, a more convenient way rather for communicating my own style of comedy. Mm. Uh, of course, I'm in Abuja here at the seat of power, but that doesn't mean I don't get the job. I can boldly say I'm only arguably one of the most booked comedian. There you because are. the reason is this, you might not get the senators, the, 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 the ministers and all to get you come do a job for them, but you are not losing the people. Um, you know, once the people are behind you, it is greater than those in power. How many number of persons are senators? But imagine having over 200 million Nigerians as your fan base. That is big enough than 50,000 who are just the minute part of the population that are in power. Uh, and I love that perspective, really. Mm -hmm. Just that video you did, barely how many days? It almost has 500,000 views. Uh, you see thousands of shares, thousands of likes and the rest. And it speaks to the point you're making exactly about that. So fantastic. Keep doing that. But... Um, that artistic, Thank you uh, so that artistic, mm. you're welcome. The artistic, uh, what I call accent. it now, the accent that you have. A lot of people love it. So, I mean, we, a lot of people hear the house accent, but it, it's like your own has another, like another layer of <laughs> secondary <laughs> to it. So, in answering the next question, I want you to answer it with that accent, your mm. artistic mm -hmm. accent. Is it a must for comedians to pass through Shege? pass through tough times before you become a comedian? Because the content is usually, ah, I suffered in the past. So is that a prerequisite to becoming a comedian in Nigeria? Must you suffer like your early part of life and then you now use that to, to do comedy? You know, um, as a person, if you, if you don't, if there's no hunger for anything, you will not deliver at it. So when hungry beat you as a comedian, once you are doing the job, you are doing it in such a way that you don't want to go back hungry. So you mm -hmm. must do it so that hungry will not beat you for the second time. Uh, it is very correct that n not all comedians went through shege, like you said. Uh, but for me, it's not like I went through shege. I only went through shege banza. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> me, I went through the Pro Max. So there's every reason why I just must do well in the comedy because mm -hmm. I can't afford to go back to seeing the Shege I saw. So that is just basically, but not like every comedian went through Shege. And, but with, it, it's just a process and a phase in life. It is the same thing with every profession. Uh, you don't just, as a, as a doctor, you don't just come and become, you just come here like that. You must start from somewhere and all that. So you must start from that, your, you know, um, early phase where it's not so good, where it's rough, but staying true to the job and being consistent at it, you definitely attain your peak. 
All right, so the king, uh, there's something you didn't do that Kai already asked, and I'm going to ask a question so you do it. Let's talk about this, your Shege Banza, this Shege Pro Max. Uh, <laughs> use your accent, the accent we're familiar with. You know, this, this is uh, the classy one. The one we're familiar with, I'm not saying that that one is not classy, by the way. The one we're familiar with, use it to describe the Shege Banza, maybe an experience uh, growing up. Okay, uh, so it starts like this, work soaps. My name is Terry Kindaria. You see, in life, if you must do well, when you have an opportunity to do a job for yourself, make sure that you do it very well so you don't go back to suffering. Like now, making you laugh is my hobby, not because I loved it, but because he's putting food on my table, I have decided to make it my hobby. And this is the only job I'll be doing, kwata kwata. So every time you see me get ready to make you laugh, don't expect me to be serious. As a comedian, we are not known to be serious. Everything I will tell you here is a joke. Are you with me now? So I want to tell you about Nigerians, basically, before we wrap up the program. Nigerians are very unique. Do you know that the evil people in this country do not like God? See, evil people, they name children, Chi was they their name. And Chi for evil means God. That is why all evil names are like Chi, Chi, Olu, Chi, Chi, Di, Chi, Amaka, Chi, Na, Gwadam, Chi, Dube, Chi, Naza, Chi, Sub, Chin, Chin, Chi, De, De, Una, Name. But I love, I love Hausa kind of name. Hausa people, we name you according to your future. If Hausa man, you see that you are going to get money when you grow up, your name, she's like Dan Tata, Dan Gote, Alameda, Suki, Atiku, Abdurrahman, Abdusalam. Sometimes, Buhari, not all the time. <laughs> but if Hausa man name you Musa, get a man, Adamu, Merwa, Ilea, Sule, 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 Wan, Shume, Kamumu, Ibo, Mumu. See, this thing is a joke. <laughs> but I love Yoruba kinds of names. Yoruba people in this country, they just name you as you look. If you are tall, you are taller. You are short, you are shorter. You have key like a lining, bow like bola, big head, for a day, long neck, nike. You have long titi titi. It is very long titi lao. You have rashes on your body as you get rashida. To do the peace for bed to you. Then give you tiny boo, you will be president. I just had to say the last one for security reasons. Because now some waiting person they take away. <laughs> Yo, uh, Yo. Yo, uh. but, uh, there are a lot of people want to hear you uh, in your now English without the accent. Is there a certain Daria that okay. just speaks English in 30 seconds? Just wrap up the show. Let them hear that uh, uh, you studied history and international relations as well. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Um, trust me, everything I've just done is just a tip of an iceberg. I've, I've got a lot of works. They'll be rolling out this year. As a matter of fact, I've got my tour happening in the entire northern states, starting from Abuja, April 13, at the Congress for Transco Hilton. I'll be doing Kano, ah. I'll be doing Plateau State Joss, I'll be doing Lafia in Nasara, I'll be doing uh, Sokoto, Gombe, and all of that. And so I look forward to having people come and enjoy comedy from a comedian who is based in the north, mm. who is changing the narrative. You know, people perceive us in the north as people who do not take joke. But I've got jokes that people in the north take. <laughs> I am the king of laughter. Serikin Daria. That's kind. Serikin <laughs> Daria. Thank you so much, Serikin Daria, for lightening up the atmosphere and giving us that opportunity to laugh. Thank you so much. And you have our best wishes in the pursuit of comic activism, uh, your trade because of unemployment. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, and we look Thank forward to so another much. opportunity. And that's how it's been on the show today. A good way to anchor it. Join us again tomorrow when we bring you another bumper package. I am Bukola Koka. Thank you so much, Ash. I'm sure uh, this very last segment is lightened your day. Make sure you take it across the day. I'm Jeffrey Zona. For Sunrise Daily's next couple of minutes, stay with us. Thank you. Goodbye.